Hi everyone and welcome for today's video. Glad that you decided to join me on this project here. As you can see, I'm starting off adding my pinboard pins underneath of the canvas as I always do. This is just a method of keeping your canvas away from the surface so that the drip of paint can drip off of the canvas and actually it doesn't glue the canvas to the surface. As you have already seen in my unbelievably fancy introduction, these are the colors that I'm using for this project here. It is the emerald green, it is a gold, and this time I'm using another gold. This is from Reefs. It is a bit pricier than the one that I usually use from Artina, but I just wanted to see how it works. In the bottle it looks really, really cool golden, so I'm pretty excited to see how this one looks right. And again, my Artina white. Besides that, some gloves as usual and some wooden sticks, popsicle sticks or Holzstäbchen if you want to call them in German. <laughs> as you can see, my popsicle sticks are already pretty messy and this is reason because I've used them for a dozen times now, I think. I just used them, let them dry, used them for resin and the seals, the acrylic paints and used them for acrylics again and so on and so on. So I really don't raise these sticks as possible, same with the mixing cups that I'm using. I also reuse them as often as I can. And this is also the reason why my cups and sticks are always looking kind of messy. So same here in this project. What I actually do is when I have acrylic paints dried in my cups and I cannot really remove it, so I cannot peel them out, I use them for resin, for the next resin painting, the resin seals the acrylic in there and then I can reuse it for acrylics. Of course these cups are getting smaller and smaller over time, but well, it's still saving stuff. For this project I felt I needed some base paint underlayer and therefore I grabbed my drip off paint collecting jar. I don't really have a cool word for it. If you want to come up with a cool word, send it to me in the comments please. So this is basically just a jar with a lid to protect the paints from drying and I put all the drip off paints from a painting in there. For those of you following me longer know that I normally have quite a bit of drip of paint and even worse I most of times mix too much paint which I not always use completely for smaller pores in the end. So if I have leftover or drip of paint I put them in this jar, seal the lid and it is stored for ever so it doesn't dry out. And whenever I have the need for a base layer, so whenever I make a larger painting, I use this paint for it. It normally gets a grayish tone, so whenever you mix a couple of different colors together it tends to be this grayish neutral color, sometimes darker, sometimes lighter. But for a base layer to help the actually really poor paint flow over the canvas easier, it is a really nice and yeah, paint saving thing. So if you have not done this so far, you might want to look into it as well. <laughs> The paints themselves I mixed like I always do. So this is my acrylic binder. It's the paint and some water if I need some. There is no silicone mixed into there. And I just recently had a couple more questions on showing my paints and how I mix them. I did not show this in the video here, but I can make a short video just showing how I mix my paints for those who would love to see it again. Nothing else, just the paint mixing. Yeah, for those who care. <laughs> And this time I actually had a goal for my project here. I wanted to try to recreate this super cool one of my all time favorite pours where I used the same color palette but the blue instead of the green and made this super cool planety, I don't know what to call it, painting. This felt to be a total fail in the very beginning because there was so much blue but I stretched and tilted the paint until I had the most awesome results that I can imagine. I really, really loved this result so, so much. And this is something I wanted to recreate with the green, but only because this green was intended to dry as dark compared to the blue as the blue, <laughs> which it didn't in the end. So there was a bit of white and gold underneath, so it dried less dark than I hope to, but the end result is still really cool. I, I like how this one came out. But this is actually what my intention was in this. So I layered up my paints as I kind of remembered I did with the blue one. <laughs> Basically just 
layering up all these three colors in my cup, making sure that green was the most part on the bottom because this is going to come out last, you know. <laughs> and then I just started pouring everything onto the surface. And by the way, I also had a couple of questions recently what I can do to prevent these larger size canvases from being saggy in the middle. Um, different approaches there. For me, these round or oval ones are always a bit stiffer than the regular square ones. Perhaps it is part of the deal how they are made or stretched, I don't know. Those always do not feel as saggy as the regular square ones. But if you have a canvas which is not as stiff as you would like it to be, you can use these wooden pieces that usually come with every canvas and you can put them in the backside and use a hammer and hammer them in. This usually spreadens the frame and yeah, tightens the canvas a bit more. If this is not enough, you can also use some water and wet the canvas from the backside and let it air dry or use a hair dryer to dry it. This again should straighten up your canvas. If you are still not happy and want it to be super solid, you can use a trick that I sometimes use for my resin pieces, especially the large ones. You can use a resin which you would normally not use for an artwork you would sell or hang yourself because it's yellowing or whatever reason. Use this resin and put a small layer on the backside of your canvas. You can also use an old brush that you will not use again in the future, of course, and just brush it on there just to really get it into the fabric and let it cure there. If cured, this is a really cool, stable and solid background and nothing should be able to bend and buckle and yeah, sag into the middle. So this is something that you can do as well, but I would personally only do it in really large sizes like 70 by 70 centimeter upwards. So the smaller ones usually work with the frame tightening and uh, watering the backside and stuff. So this is what I do. But besides that, when all the paint was on the canvas, it was most about tilting everything, trying to get the result that is nice looking and I pretty soon felt that I cannot get the effect that I was going for. But to be honest, between us pouring friends, how often can you really get the result that we are looking for? <laughs> if we fail on our goal, we just try to make something pretty out of it. And I think I did a good job there. Another question that I'm getting quite often is why my paints are looking so light and vibrant when they are wet and drying so much darker and more with contrast when they are drying. Well, the most obvious reason might be that my acrylic binder is white and it dries clear. So when you mix your paint into a white liquid, they are of course getting lightened up a bit and are not as vibrant as when they are dry or supposed to be the original color. And my acrylic binder is pretty thick and it is totally white, but it dries clear. And when it dries, it of course reveals the color that the paint actually has. So this is the reason why my paints look a bit soft and light and pastel-like when they are red and dry darker. This is the main reason why I also often tell you that you must know your colors. So if you have your favorite brand of colors that you are using all the time, you will know how your paints look when they are dry and how they react when you mix them. If you encounter a new brand that you want to test out, you of course should test your paints, how they look in the dried version before you start pouring, just to have no surprises there. And yeah, once you know about your paints, you can actually predict how the end result is going to work. If it was for me, I would not have liked the result color-wise when it would have stayed like in the red form, so this mutant color tone. I really like these dark and contrasty colors, so like a dark green with a gold and a white, or a dark blue or a dark red, something like that, which really makes it pop in the end. And as my gold is drying metallic, it gets this shimmer, and also sometimes when I use silicone for my pores, it gets this 3D look, what you can only get with a metallic color, actually. This is basically the secret magical answer to why my colors are looking different when they dry. <laughs> 
And can you believe it? I had some leftover paints again. <laughs> but I just did not want to put them into my storing jar just yet. I wanted to make some smaller pours because it was enough of color. And I grabbed two 20 by 20 centimeter canvases because I usually have a couple of them laying around. And it's just a sweet size to ship. So, yeah. And basically first thing was a ring pour, so just pouring everything into my cup, pouring a ring and stretching it, which looks kind of nice. It always gives you this feather look and I like the result. The second one was a dirty pour, just a regular old fashioned dirty pour. And I played again by adding the silicone at last. So I did not add any silicone into the paints. I put it on the canvas, stretched it there and then used some silicone and sprinkled it. Is this the right word actually? Sprinkled? It sounds more like candy sprinkles on cake. I flicked it on there. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what word is the best one to use there. Yeah, put some silicone on my fingers and splashed, sprinkled, flecked, flicked, <laughs> I don't know, on there to get the cell effect. This works pretty great. I just recently made an explanation video about this technique for those who struggle getting cells, which does pretty well. It's pretty exciting to see. And yeah, if you still have any questions among this topic or the concept or how it works, just have a look at this video or text me again in the comment box below and I will be happy to help you out as best as I can. <laughs> and yeah, this was actually everything that I can tell you about this project. It was fun. I really like this screen. I'm not so much a green lover anyways, but since I've encountered this screen, which is drying really dark green, um, I can wire my head around other colors as well. So pretty sure I'm going to use a really dark reddish tone next time soon. I don't know. So it was a longer video this time and I hope you enjoyed watching and perhaps again you got some tips and tricks along this video. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. If you're a new subscriber, please make sure to have a look at all my other videos. I made a playlist which is called Awesome Results, which are some sweet results from the last year and I would recommend starting with this one and work yourself through the other 230 videos that are there already. So yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. If you want to connect, all my social media links are down below in the video description, as well as my Etsy store and Patreon if you want to go there. Yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, thanks for your time. And other than that, I hope to see you in my next videos. <laughs> Have a great time. Bye bye.